is up everyone in the Ripple and XRP community? Welcome back. Hopefully everyone's having an amazing Saturday. So far, all is well down here in Southwest Florida. I am gearing up for the auction that's going down later today, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you don't know about it, check out the Discord links below. Come join it. But listen, in this video, what are we going to talk about? I'll tell you what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about XRP. We're going to talk about a new all-time high. Folks, I've been here since 2017. I have never been so sure, so confident in my life that XRP is going to blow past this all-time high. Easy 2x. Easy 2x from it. It's coming. It's coming this year and leading into next year. How high do we go? Time will tell. The news will tell. Utility will tell. What happens to the rest of the market's going to tell. All these other crypto stock getting regulated at the wazoo. Start seeing these stable coins blow up. Who knows? XRP, you know, it could be used as a stable coin. You only, you only need to have, well, you only need to be involved with it for about two seconds. You don't even have to hold it. You can leverage the cloud liquidity program. But we're going to talk about that market conditions. We're going to go to XRP. We're going to go into the latest Ripple insights that they put out how it all ties in we're going to talk about the price of xrp because we are setting up for one magical moment so without further ado let's jump into this thing cryptocurrency market what are we seeing well not too much change to be honest with you bitcoin still twenty thousand two hundred forty one dollars ethereum one thousand four hundred thirty eight dollars usdc used to be a dollar now 91 cents xrp is coming in at a mean lean 36 cents so cryptocurrency market cap 942 billion Bitcoin dominance, 41.49%. Now, I want to remind you this. Vox Lions, my wonderful project that if you're not a part of, you should go join. Well, on the website, I'll link it below. We're doing a free March Madness Bracket Tournament Challenge. First place, 125 XRP. Second place, 75 XRP. 30, third place, 50 XRP. And each place gets items for in-game use on the metaverse. If you don't want to get involved in the metaverse, you win the item, you sell it. That's even more XRP. It's free. Go to the site, fill this out. As soon as you're done filling it out, you get an email automatically coming back to you with the bracket info and the password to get on. We are hosting it on ESPN's website. Then I talk about these a lot because it's only 21 in stock and they're going to be sold out fast. Lux Line, Gen 2, Pride Tier, boom. 30% back in XRP. All you got to do is hold. How simple is that, folks? Then I put this out. And folks, this is going to happen to a lot of you being honest channel's all about honesty a lot of you are going to become xrp millionaires don't fight it it's going to happen all you got to do is hold not financial advice i don't want to hear it in the comments i know how some of you are all you have to do is hold we've seen this happen we've seen this happen in crypto time after time and when this ripple versus sec lawsuit is over you want to know what's going to happen the money is going to rush and flow into XRP. Why? Because it's going to be the one of only two cryptocurrencies within the United States that actually has a classification. Gary Gensler is very, very, very clear of his statements about Bitcoin, that it is not a security, that it is a commodity, that is not going to change. We know Ethereum is currently going to be under its uh, security investigations. We know that that lawsuit is going to be carried on for at least two to three years, just like the Ripple lawsuit. We know any other cryptos that get involved after that, they're going to be in, in, in the line, right? Waiting in the queue, we might say, for another two to three years to get cleared. So in the meantime, what are people going to do? They're going to jump onto the XRP bandwagon. And what do we see come out today? Is it is this the perfect storm or is this the perfect storm? Coin Telegraph. Coin Telegraph, an XRP hater, a Bitcoin Maxi journalist newspaper. What did they put out today? What is XRP? And how does it work? They haven't said boo about XRP in the past two, three, four years, folks. And now all of a sudden, the perfect article comes out. I, you know, am I happy with it? I'll give you my ass opinions. I'm okay with it, right? They do a lot, talk about a lot of crap in here that is so wrong and so misleading and so freaking stupid. We'll go over it. But the fact of the matter is, is that they're covering it, right? That's all we care about. So what do they say? What do they say? Come down here. Talk about what is Ripple? What is XRP? How does XRP work? They talk about the history. They talk about the timeline and evolution. They talk about understanding the difference between Ripple and XRP. Then they come to tell you how to mine XRP. Let's make this very clear. There is no mining of XRP. But listen to what they say, how dumb this is. He goes, while it's true that miners cannot mine XRP, 
it is technically possible to do so with the help of other cryptos. Makes no sense. So you're saying you can't mine XRP, but now you're saying it's technically possible? Come on, who wrote this? For instance, one can mine other cryptos such as Bitcoin and then swap that mine cripple for XRP through exchanges. You're not mining XRP still. You are not, you're buying it. You're doing a trade. What are you talking about? So misleading, so ridiculous, right? Then they talk about XRP versus Bitcoin. They talk about what XRP is used for. They talk about how the ledger is so efficient, how to use XRP, understanding, understanding XRP's value, where you, can, where you can buy it, and it's a good investment. Listen, the article is an article, right? Happy to see them turning it around. Cryptopia says this, Potential bankruptcy of USDC could trigger a crypto and Bitcoin recession. Here's why. Please remember to like and retweet this. USDC's potential bankruptcy can cause a crypto recession, exposing all crypto companies tied to stablecoin. Let's dive in. As of January 17th, the USDC was known to have some of its backing capital at Silvergate Bank, which is now illiquid due to the bank's shutdown. When asked about the state of USDC's reserve, circle the issue of USDC, said it's working on this eternally and will provide an update very soon. Here's why it's alarming. Circle in January report shows the company had about 10 billion in cash and a regulated bank to back its stablecoin value, including SVB and Silvergate. If Circle had a significant amount of cash at SVB, it raises concerns that the backing of USDC may no longer be complete and could become more fractional than needed to maintain stability. The recent news about SVB and Silvergate's bank winding down could cause further problems for the digital asset ecosystem and USDC's potential bankruptcy could trigger a massive crypto recession. It's unclear at the point how much USDC's reserves were held at SVB and whether Circle has already moved the funds to another institution. The fact that they won't comment is bad news. USDC does not just affect retail. A lot of crypto companies have their treasury in USDC. This could cause potential bankruptcies almost instantly. We await more updates. So he's like, could, could we get a little recession here if the stable coin's going boom? I don't know if you call it a recession. I would like to call it a little rebuild of the crypto landscape. That's what I like to call it. But you know what? At the same time, we got XRP. The beautiful, beautiful XRP, whose all-time high was $3.84. An all-time high that is going to be shattered. Why? Well, it's pretty ironic that Ripple drops this yesterday, right after, right before the news comes out of the, of the bank going down, right? They talk about treasury management. Treasury management issues. You want to talk about all the money. You talk about a company's treasury and how to manage it with XRP. You want to talk about selling RippleNet as an access to a global network. You want to talk about bypassing rough corridors like Asia, India, Brazil, and Mexico. You want to reduce the need for pre-funding and help suppliers factor in reservables. Folks, here's the article. I don't know about you, but it's almost like Ripple knew what was about to happen and they put this out because they put out a whole, a whole report talking about how these companies can use Ripple and XRP for their back end treasury management. And we know MoneyGram has already tested this and it works. It absolutely works. Right? So we get into this. We get in their introduction, they start talking about, you know, how global cross-border payments are, are disgustingly awful and broken, and they talk about major corridors that they're gonna have on board, and they wanna get rid of the pre-funding and, and stop worrying about, you know, the counterparty risk that is going on out there. Then we get down, they talk about grow your business with Ripple, payment solution. They talked about what Ripple can help you do they talking about in here, look at this, this is big. They talk about their global payment network is already connected and running in India, Mexico, Brazil, and Southeast Asia. They talk about settling global payments in real time. They talk about streamlining global treasury flows and freeing up trap capital. Think about that for a second. Streamline your global treasury flow, get rid of the trapped capital and these dormant accounts sitting out there. Well, we know there's 10 plus trillion dollars just doing nothing and they need to worry about what happens to a currency overnight from a different country because they have no control over it. And they're telling you can free all this money up 
because that's one of the benefits of using on-demand liquidity, folks. Now, can you just imagine if Circle didn't have to hold all that money in a stable, they didn't have to worry about holding a stable because they can just tap into the most powerful cross-border payments network known to men, which is known as RippleNet, and they can use the power of on-demand liquidity, aka XRP, nobody would be in a pickle right now, now would they? We go down, they, they're telling you tap on into the network, right? At the end of the day, once all these corridors are up and running and the millions and billions and trillions of dollars is flowing through this network, where do you think the price of XRP is going to go? And to top it all off, you know what? I mean, mute, I mean, mute. Amount of XRP is birthed on each and every transaction. Imagine the transactions going on around the world and XRPs keep getting burned. You know what? Sooner than later, that number is going to add up. It's almost like, think about it like a little piggy bank. You know, you put a penny in there every day, every year, penny a day, 365 pennies. Sooner than later, that one penny is going to be valued and worth something. And then what if you expand that? You start growing your piggy bank. You start putting in two pennies a day, 10 pennies a day, 20 pennies a day, 50 pennies a day. And you start doing that. As time passes, what's going to happen? The value is going to grow. Folks, we are getting to a tipping point where the value of XRP is going to grow. That tub that we've been talking about for quite some time, that tub that has been filled with water, it's almost filled to the top. It's about to flow over. You're about to see this thing go to the freaking moon and come back. I can't wait. Wash your damn hands. Be nice. Be kind to each other. Ripple Van Winkle is out.